Yeah, I haunted myself and I have unhaunted myself. It's a strange story, but I got really paranoid concerning the old guy that lived next door. I thought he might have been dead. So I've reported it to the emergency services and social services with concern, even though he's an old tosser. Um, but I got really convinced that he was dead in there and that he was haunting me and like sniffing my hair and stuff. And like, even Lawrence thought he'd seen a ghost. So I was like, <laughs> except he's not actually dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's in hospital uh, and he's quite undead so um, I literally freaked myself out for sweet he's next to a neighbour who's in hospital if I'm getting, reading this right and Martin was convinced that he was dead and that he was haunting him and smelling his hair so he's called the council and said you need to check on my neighbour because I think they might be dead but they're not dead they're in the hospital which is fine that's better but they might die because they're in the hospital so that, that might be bad if they do die from being in the hospital fuck off so be careful what you think I did a paranoid double fat firms Look at his face! When he starts to destroy his, his face, I love mine. Uh, I haunted myself and I have unhaunted myself. It's a strange story. But, but I'm charting a narrative, right? I'm creating a narrative that um, seems through this that Martin's been replaced by clones and that uh, the people that watch him, the Flat Earthers, they should listen to me, right, when I talk about this. I throw it in all the time now, it's my new one. Uh, Martin's been replaced by clones and he's telling us this in these shorts especially um so haunting himself how do you haunt yourself well if you've got a doppelganger and if your original is dead so martin's died and he's been replaced by clones but i got really paranoid concerning the old guy that lived next door i thought he might have been dead so i've reported <laughs> it to the emergency services and social services with concern even though i reported it <laughs> to the emergency services and the social services. <laughs> He's an old tosser. Um, but I got really convinced that he was dead in there and that he was haunting <laughs> me and like sniffing my hair and stuff. And like, even Lawrence thought Mink. he'd seen a ghost. Mink. So I was like, except he's not actually dead. <laughs> he's in hospital <laughs> and he's quite undead. So um, <laughs> he's, I he's not undead like a zombie. Literally freaked myself out for sweet. He's Fuck alive. Off. So be careful what you think. <laughs> I did a paranoid. Happy flat day, double flat thumbs to Infinity Fries. Um, I'm gonna dazzle all of you tonight at nine o'clock GMT. We've got like literally a mind blowing show ready for tonight. I can't believe how much we've placed together in one week. I'm, I'm actually cooking a roast dinner at the moment. Okay, as you can see, I'm making preparations. Looks like a fucking, wait, wait. Looks like a fucking mess going on there, doesn't it? Looks like he's one of these that's got everything out. <laughs> For a beautiful Welsh lamb roast. I know, I know, but you know, I'm Welsh. Um, and I think the potatoes, I'm peeling potatoes, okay, are trying to tell me something. What do you think the potatoes are trying to tell me? That you're mutating? Love wins the day. Anyway. It looked like a potato. What's this? This is a Tatarian Liberation Army survival tip. Module number one. Waterproofing your matches. So get some matches, okay? And dunk them in some... Yeah, you, you probably want to put out the candle before you start waving the matches around next to it. Some freshly made candle wax. Yeah, and this is how to, and then that's covered in wax, and then when you strike it, you rub off the wax. Yeah, that's true. Um, bit weird. Then, dunk in the water, which is your tsunami. Okay. Right, let's see if this remains waterproof. Let's click that wax off. Wax okay, on, let's wax give it off. A strike. Here we go. Waterproof match. Ow! No, that landed on my bollocks. This is a Tatarian lib. Year in review 2022. So epic 22. We'd be a bit behind with Martin, you know. We're a bit behind. Oi, oi, all. Flat firms. Happy New Year to you all. So I've put a, an interesting community uh, message out uh, today concerning how many people think this is a simulation.
situation we live in. Interesting comment back from my brother David Mannell, who is Trinity 4 for men, who seems to think it's some sort of projection which <laughs> we encode. I agree. I think we encode it through our thoughts, our emotions, and our speech. But there is something that you maybe should know. The enemy uses sound. Audio is death. You speak, you die. It's phonetics. It's the phone. It's the phonograph. Maybe this is the reason why certain people had a vow of silence in the past. Maybe this is the clue in... You're talking on your phone. The sound of silence. Or silence is golden. Oi, oi, all flat firms. Happy New Year to you all. So I've put a, an interesting community uh, message out. That it might be a simulation. Oi, oi. Flat firms. The thing, thing is, before he went to America, because Martin got a bit eggy last year, right? I stopped covering him. I moved on to doing different things. But Martin got a bit eggy last year, right? And he actually, at that sort of point, he'd gone to his audience and he'd said, look, he'd done a community post. And his community post, I wonder if it's still there, actually. I mean, he's probably done loads of community posts since then, hasn't he? Fucking hundreds since then, yeah. He put out a community post, though, and it was, like, basically saying... I, I clipped it, I screenshotted it, and, like, probably tweeted it. It was basically saying, listen, you fuckers aren't giving me enough monies. <laughs> I'm doing all this work, and you fuckers aren't giving me enough monies. What's going on? And uh, he got really eggy about it. And then since then, he started doing this. These are th pen drives. And you can buy these pen drives with stuff on, like, old books. And they're 80 quid. Like a USB stick for 80 quid with a load of old books on that Martin's got off the internet. Like, what? And he started selling this stuff and he started getting his, his money in. And he went to America, to the flat earth people in America. And he's been there having fun in America. So since I last like followed up on him, like he wasn't doing so well when I last looked at him. But since then, he's had a haircut. He's had fun in America. He's had the big money coming in. He's selling the pen drives. Things are going well for Martin, I think. Oi, oi, flat of British, Martin Leaker like speaking. And I am today talking to you from Dealey Plaza in Dallas. I'm not even joking. Um, just behind me there is the book suppository, which apparently Oswald shot JFK. So I'm in Dealey Plaza. The grassy knoll is just over by there. Check this building behind me. Tartaria, Tartaria. So yeah, I'm in America, guys. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Check this out, though. That is beautiful. There's a homeless here. They're going to be hassling him. <laughs> so, we're going to walk around Dallas. He's much less brazen and much more cautious around in America because everyone's got guns, I reckon. we do a little uh, D Plaza tour. Right, ready? Ready, chick? Come on. Let's check it out, please. Pack, pack in meter edge. What have they done? Weird. So he's been doing better since he went to America and had his hair cut. Let's have a look at his recent ones. Hiya. What shampoo do you use? I bet loads of you are wondering how Martin manages to keep his hair so curly, just like Michael Hutchins from In Excess. <laughs> well, I use... Voo 5 Spunk for Men. The Smell of a Real Man by Voo 5. Let's take a look at this. You squirt it, you get it out. And I've been collecting this for days. So, be great. Well, it's all over my computer. But it won't matter. It won't matter. Anyway, rub it in your hair and it'll give you nice curly things, just like Martin. Okay? Remember, Voo 5 Spunk for Men. The smell of a real man. Hello. <laughs> I'm supposed to react and comment, you know, making sure that I'm doing the uh, fair use and all that. But what I don't know how to say what to say about it. <laughs> what? Why? At some point, he sat at home and he thought, "Hey." 
<laughs> like, at some point, he's in the shower with this conditioner or whatever, this shampoo, and he's thought, no, no, this isn't a real product. This is a funny one. This is a joke. He's thought, this shampoo looks a bit like cum. And then he's thought, what I'm going to do, right? <laughs> Because I'm on the internet making videos all the time, so, you know, what I'm going to do is... This could be the one that goes viral, this one. This could be the one that goes viral. Look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shampoo advert and we're going to say it's spunk for men and it's funnest. And then to follow through with that, he's got some sellotape and some paper and written spunk for men on the paper and sellotaped it around the bottle. And then he's done this. And it's like a choice that he's made to put this short out of this. <laughs> What shampoo do you use? I bet loads of you are wondering how Martin manages to keep his hair so curly just like Michael Hutchins from In Excess. I thought that was funny. Well, I use Vu 5 Spunk for Men. The Smell of a Real Man by Vu 5. Let's take a look at this. You squirt it, you get it up. And I've been collecting this for days. So, because so, Martin does like to get high like I do, so I could see myself thinking this is a good idea at some point, but then maybe not uploading it. Uh, be great. It's all over my computer. No, hang on, no, wait. <laughs> Is this what I look like to Alan when I'm putting my willy in his mouth? Anyway, rub it in your hair and it'll give you nice curly things, just like Martin, okay? Remember, Vu5 spunk for men. The smell of a real man. I think he's back from America now. I think he just went on there for a big holiday. But he's got friends there now and like he'll go back again things are going well for the flat earth movement again maybe I shouldn't have given Andy Frank those chips that time we're sad about it now actually that crunching gave it away not my fault <laughs> he just said do you think I should have given Anne Frank those chips that time? I feel bad about it now. It, all the crunching gave her away. It's not my fault. <laughs> I did a joke the other day about Anne Frank, didn't I? <laughs> Maybe me and Martin are not so dissimilar. Maybe we're not so dissimilar, but I don't, again, I don't know if I'd make this particular choice. What shampoo do you use? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have given Anne Frank those chips. Maybe I shouldn't have given Anne Frank those chips. I feel sad about it now. I feel sad about it now. That crunching gave her away. Oh, <laughs> that crunching gave her Not away. My fault. I'll talk to her. She was living in an attic. Fucking nuts. <laughs> Eating the triple XL bag of snack day chips. That was quite funny. You think he's like in some ways, right? The thing about Martin is that That's Martin would be alright sat round a table at a pub. You know when you go in the pub and there's different people and they're sat around the big table and he'd like, Oh, I'll sit with the locals and like, You're alright, how's it going? Yeah, whatever. And like, you know, he'd be alright as a fella in the pub. He's actually quite likable, yeah. Like he's from Wales and he's got a good manner about him. He smokes weed, like he's a bit hippy dippy. But the problem with Martin is that he's selling pen drives for eighty quid and on them is a load of bollocks he's just downloaded PDF files from the internet, like old out of print books. And the other one that he's selling is like a load of other nonsense about the earth being Oh, he's got no wait, he's got another one that's all his photos. All the photos he's like if you go to his community posters, all those pictures, like all the photos he's put onto a big file. Like, and you could buy it for 80 quid. He's a grifter. He's done two books, I think, about the Flat Earth concept. He's uh, done the Flat Earth meetups. He's done the Flat Earth... Like He's using the Flat Earth British movement. He is the Flat Earth British movement, and he's using it to create himself... Like That's his financial... He's got a financial interest in it, and the interest is he has to make sure he makes loads of money. <laughs> And, like, it's not an honest day's work for an honest day's pay here, because I don't know if Martin really thinks the earth is flat. <laughs> but I think if he talks a load of nonsense and, like, you know, I think he's a, like, a bit like Alan, I think he's a talker. 
I think he's a, a nonsense spinner. You know, I think he's a... I think he's good at that as well, in actual fact. Here he is Are you still right. stuffing your... Let's move on to him live. I think he's good at that, but I think the bottom line is people shouldn't be giving this man money. And what he does is he creates a community of people, makes them feel like, you know, they need to... And then sometimes, like, hassles them for money, in a way. ...tricked into a trick existence. This paradigm where your children are not even your own, apparently. You belong to them. And you have to register them. And all this strange maritime law can see... So what goes on is he's got a group of people who are... Again, it's like Alan. The demographic is... Um, over 50s and he makes them feel confused and isolated on the internet and like when they get into this flat earth rubbish and this conspiracy stuff they start losing their friends and then the only friends they've got are within this group and then they're committed to the group it's cult like like there's lots of negatives about it. just because he's charismatic and lovely doesn't mean he's not doing something really bad as well like that's the problem with this a few years ago a couple of years ago where we should have all stood up together and say no you lot can fuck off we're going to work Okay, we're going to not take any notice of the television and we're going to work and we're going to carry on. You know, a bit like Sweden did and a couple of other places. And so nothing really happened. Nothing here, here he's saying that we shouldn't have had lockdowns. I mean, in hindsight, easy to say, but at the time, saved a lot of lives, I think. so. And um, did whatever they were told. You know, would you put your hands in the fire if they told you to put your hands in the fire? No, absolutely not. But in the face of a deadly pandemic, I would be considering doing lockdowns to prevent mass deaths while we get a handle on the situation. Sanity business to saving whoever's good and left. Because they are not here, okay? They're all in the same weird family, guys. Have you seen... It's not just flat earth, though, you see? Like, you could pull him up on the fact that the earth isn't flat. You know, you could have a scientific discussion with him. But it's not about that, really. It's about this, like, never-ending, self-asserting... Everything's like every, all you know. Everything's fake. Everything's false. You don't know the real reality. We've got the truth and the answers. You know all of this nonsense. This is Martin Le Le Martin Leitka. Good, and he sent me on it. He's quite popular. Sixty thousand subscribers. Two hundred and thirty watching his show now. Explain at the beginning of this vlog may seem a bit strange, but we're going to learn something that maybe we didn't know before. As in, pre Mercator maps, they were all upside down. Or Muslim or world maps were all upside down. Why is that? So, as from a northern perspective, looking south, all maps were from a northern perspective and upside down. Now, there must be a reason for that. So, I started to wonder whether or not, you know, because everything was reversed in this place, if it was a simple switch of, well, the needle is red and it does point north, but maybe they just switched the N for the S. Hmm. So, this book got me thinking. So, Arctic Roots to Fabled Lands. Now, I've got quite a few books in my library concerning fabled lands and Hyperboreum. And these uh, fabled lands. And then I got to think... So the answer is, South was on top conventionally known as Islamic maps to depict the Muslim countries north of Mecca. Other maps had East on top because the sun rises there. But sometime in the 12th century, when the compass was adopted for navigation in Europe, North on top became and largely remained a thing. But yeah, they had upside down maps. Like there was no convention back then. Um, there's Eli Arquette again, way um, back to Martin. Think about this book, which is my favorite book of all time. Probably is one of my favorite books. That and HMS Ulysses um, by um, Ian Fleming, the, the James Bond guy. That is a fabulous book, by the way, if you're into maritime battles. So, um, The Smoky God, okay, the story of Olaf Johnson. I believe this happened, this went down. But the curious thing about this is he goes to the North Pole. He goes past the North Pole Okay, and it's still the needle still pointing. He was past the supposed North Pole. Hmm? And then it gets warm like a summer's day in Amsterdam. And then he arrives in a continent or continents of what are on many maps, even Mercator maps. The smoky god. The Smoky God 
or A Voyage to the Journey of the Inner Earth is a book presented as a true account written by Willis George Emerson in 1908, which describes the adventures of Olaf Janssen, a Norwegian sailor who sailed with his father through the entrance to the Earth's interior at the North Pole. So, it's science fiction, yeah? Like, presented... It was a, presented as a true account, but it was written by Willis George Emerson in 1908. An American novelist newspaperman, lawyer, politician and promoter. So, novelist then, like, you know. <laughs> Martin's confusing fact and fiction here. The Hyperborea, hmm? which we talk about quite a lot in this field, don't we? Where you have beautiful giants all in silks and they looked after Olaf and his father <laughs> for some time. The curious thing about that is they went in in the north, okay, but Olaf came out in the south. So some people have proposed, did he go into an inner earth? Okay, but maybe that is not the case. Maybe something else is completely go different going on and it would cause a lot of confusion. Now, it gives you a whole new perspective. Um, like the first time I ever seen the Azimuthal Equidistant map, the AE, the Flat Earth map, okay? It changed my life. That blew my head off to think that there was something else that could be going on outside of the spinny globe thing. Hmm? It blew my mind to change my life. The AE map, the Azimuthal Equidistant changed my life when I seen that. And then I got sort of clued up about the longitude and latitude problems early on. And then there's the confusion with the international date line. And there's, you know, it, the whole thing just doesn't tally what? up. Um, a lot of it tallies up on an AE map, as we know, with flight, flight times, etc. We're not going to go into that, but... No, it doesn't. Why are all early maps upside down? And I'm going to show you something and just throw it out there. Okay, I know I might be onto something or might be not be. Okay, but it doesn't really matter anyway, because we got a fuck ton of information in this. I found an epic book. Okay, it's, it's called, okay... Um, the Magnificent and Memorable Things of the World. Not so now what we're doing is we're jumping to a different book. More or less. It's from 1400. It's a colour illustrated manuscript from 1400. And they didn't know what was going on in 1400 like we do now. But it is quite memorable because apparently it's not a fiction. It's true. And what it's got is full of um, weird cryptids, dragons, things that live in the wood, giant, I mean, giant birds attacking people, gi lots of giant animals attacking people, like um, mega beasts. Um, and also... Um, so See how we've jumped subject now as well. We were talking about whether the earth was flat for a minute just there, and now we're talking about mega beasts. Um, terrible sort of violent crime going on. Okay, which we're going to look at. But this seems to be the whole world over around this period. Plus, everything seems to be in a watery, you know, reset world as well. So I'm going, we're going to ponder why... Watery reset. There's this, they've got the conspiracy theory that the world was reset by a mud flood. This um, narrative in this French manuscript and countless others that I posted about put these cryptids, you know, the uh, Bellinis, the Dogheads, the Sinosafria, etc., as real. They're all over all of the early Phoenician maps, Map of Mondays, et cetera. They're there in antiquity. They're there in the hieroglyphicum. They're there in the alchemical uh, depictions. They are there all over the place. Why? But they're not here now, are they? They don't exactly exist now in any shape or form, no. do they, in no. this place? Hmm? But it may exist if it existed somewhere quite close by, and they may even still be there. In my mind, I was wondering whether, you know, because they repeat everything, like York, New York, all the place names is, you know, like they said on Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's because there were European people that went from York to the new land, and they called it New York. Is, um, you know, why build one Earth when you can build two? And if this wasn't the real one anyway, you know, a bit like the higher self snap. Yeah, but we've got the original York as well, so. Rio, where they got another Earth and a lot of the photographs and the images that we're seeing that we can't gel with because we think there's something off with them is because that's not taken in this realm, but a copy. Um, a copy? Um, which is really close by. Can you imagine? Really close by? Like, where close by? Celestially, we'd crash into it, wouldn't we? 
on the other side of the sun. That's what it must be. Because you can't see on the other side of the sun. Like, not at the exact time. Like it's, it's orbiting sun at the exact opposite as, of us, yeah? If only we could. That's what it must be. Imagine another version of you walking down the street right today, but not actually here in this realm, but in a copy realm quite close by. Why not? Why not? At the same time, simultaneously. Hmm. Something about that when I say, yeah. So which one of you am I watching stream now? You or the one in the... It doesn't matter because you're both doing it. Not sure, though. So, um, Gavin, we got 400 newly people just turned up, which is an absolutely fantastic thing. I do really do appreciate you spending your time. He does do bonds and numbers. On a flatter day night. Okay, we got a lot to talk about. Regular flatter day night. Uh, depictions books. It's mind-blowing minds, and there's some nasty things in it. So we're going to definitely look at that. Dun, you know, dun, dun. I think what so I should do is I should introduce our audience on Battery Exhausted to some of these other lol cows that I'm interested in. Martin does regular streaming, uh, so he could be a candidate, you know, like Alan, like, you know, how we, we watch and react to Alan. Martin could be a flatter day regular, you know, we could regularly do this. Not regular, I'm not going to always do it. Not regular, regular, but you know what I mean? Like, we could bring Martin into the, the carousel more, if you like them and you know with me and what i do you know if i go through photographs and i'm like fuck me these are good then we're on the same thing and fuck me these were good <laughs> okay um we're going to look at pre-war germany before the destruction and some after it a little bit later on we're going to look at some cool places some uh tatarian if you want to call it that architecture in um macon in georgia i don't know that place at all detroit and we're going to look at the destruction and the digging out, they say the moving, rising and moving of an entire city, which makes no sense at all to me, of uh, Seattle. OK, and I'm always wondering as well, like, you know, um, this will fit with the maps while I'm about to show you as well. And I'll, I'll explain as I'm going is, you know, you get, you know, the story is, is like, you know, the older buildings in America um around the east coast okay so you got like boston has got buildings from 1700s and philadelphia and stuff and the story is is you know it took you a long time to get further west you know wagon trains etc to you know get to these places apparently and then occupy them but that's not what we find is it we find that the architecture in like you know any everywhere from oregon um down to california is all like shit ton of old world architectures color la is just mind-blowing for uh sort of italian architecture old world mud flooders absolutely everywhere so how is that you know so they got there like 1850 and then shit this entire massive world out in what like a couple of years until the photographic record caught kind of yeah doesn't fit with the wild west films and it what do you think americans in chat do you think that uh <laughs> the people had like you know they built the stuff in America, or do you think they dug it out of the mud and it was already there? Indian attacks and etc. In my mind, building these giant stone cities just doesn't ring true at all. Something's off. Um, it wasn't there like a, f a phenomenal amount of people that all migrated there. <laughs> wasn't there a lot? <laughs> like who built all the stone buildings in America? Like all the big stone buildings, wasn't it? Like slave people had to do a lot of the hard work as well. Like I mean. <laughs> is Martin not discounting the truth of history here who built the buildings and haven't they got records like in general in America don't they have records as to who built or built the buildings like no one's confused about where the buildings came from are they like look at um, other pictures um, Stockholm we're going to look at which is absolutely beautiful they had it going on there we're going to look at Dresden um, and the shit ton of stuff, guys. So buckle in. I've got um, images of the day, memes of the week, a little bit of a giggle later on. A lot of stuff. So buckle in. We're not going to do the full Martin experience tonight. I'm telling you that. But uh, I do want to cut this and upload it and see what the see what the response is from the upload and see if we want to do it. I mean, I, I predict that I could, you know, the way we do Alan, I could just do a, I could, should be doing this on Battery Exhausted, you know doing the Martin live stream, restream one of the times. And I happen to be doing it tonight because we just happen to be browsing and here he is, but... Accurate. The Mercator maps are purpose, purposely um, all out perspective, you know, like um, Greenland's 114th the size... Well, of course, everything's out of perspective on a map because if you did it at exactly the right perspective, then it'd be a fucking globe. And then you'd like... 
what do you want about <laughs> like germany if it's not popular at the time will be smaller france will be smaller <laughs> or if it's in britain will be bigger islands when it's only really you know tiny island this sort of thing it depends if you've got a map of britain like it depends if you're british and you're looking at the map of britain or if you're like you know it'd be hyperborea now we're gonna have a think about that the hyperborea what's the chances of only three days sailing north of the uk okay not what? that far past spitzberg and is a continent that is um, fully um, inhabited by everything from cryptids to pygmies in different parts of these continents. It's a Very unlikely. Be a reality. It seems fantastical, doesn't it, to think that they would be that close. But regardless, there's something weird going on with the North Pole. We're not allowed to go there. There's this mech You are allowed to go there. Uh, with the Antarctica Treaty in the North Pole. I don't know any any of you seen the Justin Trudeau interview or his talk where he went to the North Pole when he was a boy. That well, was he he went. It's weird. That was yeah, well, it was weird. You just said he couldn't go. Now he's been. It's weird. I remember watching a series with Michael Palin called Pole to Pole. I've actually well, Martin pa Michael Palin went. He got the book. You've and got the book. And he went into this just um, a giant um, cafeteria restaurant full of scientists in the North Pole. Well, it's a frozen ocean. It's not even that deep because Russian submarines can burst through it. Yeah, they've got these buildings on there packed with uh, scientists for what? Studying the North Pole and the conditions of the Arctic and the melting ice caps and the... What do you mean? What are the scientists for what? For what? So they can take... The North Pole. Take ice cores and look at air samples from X amount of years ago. Like that makes any fucking difference. Hmm? So they never made Michael Palin, <laughs> even though he's one of the gang or around the table. They never made him welcome in that TV series. <laughs> welcome at like, the North Pole. They made him feel really uncomfortable. He can wait at the North Pole. <laughs> wait to get out of there. And it was all recorded. And he's like, I don't know what's going on in there. So I was thinking <laughs> about it. I was way before Flat Earth was and i was wondering about like why the fuck was what's going on in the north pole it was bugging me even then you know way back <laughs> when, when that happened oh my god i need to see this i, I just need to see it now michael palin north pole michael palin pole to pole cold start at the north pole it's the full episode. I don't want to watch the full episode, copyright, but no, I have to see this now. I have to see this. <laughs> Martin's telling us that he had a bad time and the scientists wouldn't let him in and like, or whatever. That the North Pole doesn't exist. Like, here it is. Here it is on the Telus. There he is at it. That way, I go down through Japan. If I went that way, I go down through India. But we've chosen a route that way, 30 degrees east, line of longitude, down through Russia and Africa. It's going to be a hell of a long journey, but uh, well, let's go. This was brilliant. One of the Pythons, the Monty Python people, decided that he was going to do travelling and do it as TV, and going from pole to pole is a good idea. It's <laughs> just a prop. Um, Okay, so here's the scientists. They're at the pole. Like, they're not. It's houses. Look. To leave us alone. How many polar bears are there on the and sledges? It's an unusual journey, and as one of our Norwegian guides explains, it demands unusual precautions. We have to carry guns just in case. So polar bears are too hungry to leave us alone. That sounds nice. Uh, are they off already? I thought we were going to be seeing some scientists and some. What's, what? Where's the scientists? by the certainty and comfort of silence. It's very pleasant to have some women companions sometimes. You are an ordinary man and you feel some needs now and then, but I think I would prefer to stay alone. Is that the scientists? That didn't look like scientists. What's he going on about? Because the journey is from pole to pole and they've left. They've gone. 
they've now left like the, the part of the, the episode is we leave the North Pole and start traveling south. That's the main thing. So we're not at the North Pole. We've left. We've gone. So the North Pole starts at the start of the episode and he's there in the snow and there's these guys and they're ha like scared of the polar bears and then they go off in their, their and then there's a guy in a cabin. Is it this guy? This it can be the only guy that they discover is this guy in the cabin on the way. A rack full of dead seals. This guy's not a scientist. <laughs> he's got a rack full of dead seals. This guy's not a scientist. Like a and a trapper. And he's lived he's here on his own for 15 years. He's a trapper. 15 years clubbing seals to death on his own. It's a very lonely life here, Harold, isn't it? I mean, how do you, why do you choose a life like this? Oh, that was, in the beginning, it was some sort of adventure about the whole thing, but it's not that anymore. No, it's just a way of living. But, I mean, it's become a way of life on your own, beating seals to death at the North Pole. The idea of a trapper now is very, it's very unfashionable. I mean, environmentally, the idea of people hunting and killing animals is, is, is now much criticised. I mean, how do you... Very true. Very true, Michael. Very, very sophisticated and British of you. How very... You're at the North Pole, Michael. He hasn't, he's had a shave. He's all fresh-faced. He's ready to go on his trip, pole to pole, at the North Pole. Very British. OK. Going back to uh, Martin, who told us that that... I've just checked it, Martin. I've just checked it. It's available for you to watch on the internet. There were no scientists. They weren't cross. Michael wasn't ostracised. No, he's one of the gang. Or Ram's talk when he went to the North Pole when he was a boy. That was weird. That was weird. I remember watching a series with Michael Palin called Pole to Pole. I've actually got the book. And he went into this just a, a giant um, cafeteria restaurant full of scientists in the North Pole. Well, it's a cafeteria restaurant. It's like there was none of that. Frozen ocean. It's not even that deep because Russian submarines can burst through it. Yeah. Am I tripping? Like, we just looked at this. He's flown in. There's the plane. He's, there's the journey. There's the little town that there is. There is a little town there. Here is an that advert. Just... It's force feeding me an advert for stuff that I'm never going to drink. And then they get on the bikes and they're away, look. They're away and they meet the trapper. There's no fucking cafeteria. What are you smoking, Martin? I'm on the boat now. I kind of want to watch that instead of Martin. Yeah, they got these buildings on there, packed with uh, scientists for what? For what? So they can take ice cores and look at air samples from X amount of years ago. Like that makes any fucking difference. Hmm? I thought about the mod settings. What I might have to do is find the mod setting where I've set it to heavy moderate language and just tell it to not. So they never made Michael Palin, even though he's one of the gang or around the table. They never made him welcome in that TV series. And he was like, they made him feel really uncomfortable. He couldn't wait to get out of there. And it was all recorded. And he's like, I don't know what's going on in there. So I was thinking about it. I was way before Flat Earth that was. And I was wondering about, like, why the fuck was, what's going on in the North Pole? It was bugging me even then, you know, way back when, when that happened. And you're not allowed to go there. You can't just, you know, there's been plenty of people. I watched, um, I, I follow a sailing. Michael Palin fucking went there. Channel uh, called Sam Holmes. And la only last year, he tried crossing an invisible line and they bit literally got taken down by the Norwegian Navy where they find him like 20,000 kroner or whatever. I don't know, a load of money anyway. It's different if you're sailing around on the random. I don't know what's going on. Okay, you can't just... Uh, I also watched this thing and this happened, but we just saw a thing on the telly where it didn't happen where it, the way you said it is, so I don't know if I should trust what you're saying now, Martin. For crossing an invisible line, he asked, well, why? Why can't I cross it? They said, oh, oh, it's officially protected. So well, there you go, then. Enough fucking Arctic Ocean, Tyrian Ocean in the middle of nowhere. So there's something going on in the North Pole. What is it? I 100%. You know, we got the narratives for Admiral Byrd, haven't we, guys? You know, that he went into, into a hole, the North Pole hole, which I actually think might be something like that there. You know, we get the Northern Lights, which, in, to my mind, is... Why wouldn't Michael Payne have gone down it? Laser, like laser light, a magnetised light, which comes from 
Madness, North Pole Hall, which I've covered on the series Great Sneakers, The Secret Never Told in my first book, um, The Holy Grail of a Flat Earth. So, upside down maps, 500 of you just mosey on in. Let's give you a few of you shouts, and then we're going to get stuck into it, having a look at these maps. Show, show baby! Show baby! Oh! Larry? Two plus two is 22, and new math. I, I, my brain just collapses, anything to do with maths. I don't know what it is. Great with geography and history, things like that. Maths, fuck me. I a Martin does a really good job of being relatable and forming this community. Like, they got 500, like, he does a better job than Alan, or even me, I suppose, um, of uh, this. He's got a lot of people in his chat. He's regular, they're regular. They have a good time. They all believe a load of nonsense, I think. And I don't don't think all of them do, actually. I think some of them don't believe all the same nonsense. I think they've got, like, different breeds of nonsense that they believe in the chat. Um, but he does a really good job of being, like you said earlier, like, he's quite personable. And he can talk, and they enjoy sitting and listening to him, don't they? Well, watch it. It's bound to be on YouTube. Best program there ever was. Well, not really. There's a few better than that. Still a big Bewitched fan. Love that program. Lizzie, good to see you. Or Rizzy, yeah. I should say. Pavlov. Ugh, I said that one before. The last recipe. That's the recipe, not the last recipe. I don't know where that comes from. Juicy Lucy, Jordy, Wardy, and Joe. And son of Overbrook, who I called Overlook for the first five years. <laughs> Donna, Tara. My brain changes around. I don't know what's going on. So I'm wearing time. Ugh. I got a, like a, a form of Tourette I found out today. I don't know why. Same wrong with me. Went to time to, you know, went out today to try and break pattern. Literally, I had a, there's there's a football match, right? Now, I'm a flat earther. I couldn't give two fucks for any sport. Uh, any sport to me is totally gay. Not being funny, but up to me, right? It's like sorry, dicky knocking in the showers. Did you just come out with outright homophobia and level it at all sport? <laughs> but I couldn't give two fucks for any sport. Uh, any sport to me is totally gay. Not <laughs> Just when I thought he's getting a bit dull, like Martin, like you see, you see these people. See, I've got these this nutter radar. Martin's one of my favourite nutters. You, you all thought that Alan was the original nutter. Alan's not the original nutter. Great pattern. Literally, I had a, there's there's a football match, right? Now, I'm a flat earther. I couldn't give two fucks for any sport. Uh, any sport to me is totally gay. Not being funny, but up to me, right? It's like dicky knocking in the showers. And it's an excuse to get to that. Okay, so don't go to sports. But a coach load of Sheffield Wednesday fans went past me and my son and they were giving us the finger out of the wind. Probably all gays. Going, you Welsh fucks. Out the window. Just like, yeah, you're not going to pull up and come out and say that, though, are you? Although they're... Although if they did, there'd be a busload of angry Sheffield Wednesday fans and there'd be you and your son. So like, I'm sure Lawrence can handle himself, but like, you don't look like you can. And it would be a fucking nightmare for you. Big up, Sathid. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I, I could just imagine it, like a load of football fans driving through Wales in a coach, like giving everyone the finger. Hey! And then mine's like... You're all fucking Nicky knockers. Towards <laughs> 50 odd of them, but that's all right. I had my son with me. You would have took fucking 49 of them. I'd have had the one, the driver, because he was really overweight. So, yeah, I knew the football, Raya, and I don't even like sports. Brutal. Anyway, Yadda, Yabba. Isn't it? It's like, it's really stupid football, isn't it? It's like, you know, rowing over, kicking a fucking ball about. I've, Fucking retarded. You're gonna get your fucking head kicked in. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. And then they all rush over and then everyone starts basically girly slapping. Don't give me any bruises. My wife's gonna kill me if she knows I've been fighting. That sort of thing. They're like not real hooligans, not like in the old days. Yeah. In the so Martin. Old crew. Gone. Um Martin is you know, this is Martin. Welcome to the world of Martin Leaker. For all those who haven't seen him before, I'm going to cut this, put it up on YouTube. It's going to be a little short one, just an introduction to Martin. Like, he does these regular live streams. He'll get on now talking about the map, you know, look. Like... Yeah. 
Now look. Switch the north and south needle. There's a bit of an island. Maps were... There's a bit of an island where he's got the stream yards and he's got his screen on screen and he's showing you what he's looking at and it's all these maps and he's doing the tour. He does these. He does these. He's done um, the Makata that we used today. So uh, these, these, bits, in North. these bits aren't as fun, I guess. I don't want to watch hours and hours of this. <laughs> but his introductions and his talking, that's kind of fun. And his shorts are fun. Uh, we'll do another short before we, we leave Martin Leeker and probably play packing for a bit to chill. Let's have another couple of look at these shorts that we were looking at. Nice. It looks like we've got a complainer outside the council buildings or the government buildings in here. Is she on YouTube, is she? Uh, Facebook Live. Facebook Live yeah. now? Yeah. I had... All positive, are they? Two daughters. What do you do? One YouTube. was mine. Oh, okay. Did you do, like, campaigns? Yeah. Yeah, I protested. Oh, I protested British. everything. Do you? Yeah. Martin Leaker, I am on uh, Flat Earth British on YouTube. I have a meeting. I don't know what's going on with this woman and her two daughters, yeah? She's got a serious problem that she's trying to deal with at the council. She's on a protest, something to do with her daughters. Martin's rocked up. This girl with the glasses he was talking to, she's like, oh, do you do YouTube as well? Yeah, he's like, I do. I'm, I protest everything. I'm Flat Earth British. And that's just dropped it there, hasn't it? She's just thought, oh, God, not a nutter. They put a child. It's a subject I don't like, though. Yeah, it's not a subject. It's not, it's like not, it's there, but I don't want to think about it either. Nobody Sorry. wants to. I know. But it needs to be they, make, they make you do it. They make you think about it. They well, put child protection we on my baby in my room yeah. when I was 12 so weeks pregnant. Just remove the children from all the Hi guys, it looks like we've got a complainer. So that was a good short, Martin. Oi, oi, flat of British, Martin Leaker speaking. Today at Panaf Marina, just near Cardiff, and we're working on Lawrence's boat. Aye, aye, Skipper, permission to come aboard. How's your 3D printed things going? Let's have a look. Yeah. Ankle is full of water. Shit, so it is. So it come off the That's deck. From the rain. Yeah, let's pump all that out. We've got a hand pump. That's yeah, I'll get that done now. Oh, okay, so it's an absolutely beautiful day. We've been waiting forever. It's just been shit in Britain for quite some time. Uh, but today's a beautiful, warm day in sunny South Wales. That it's nice that he goes on the boat with his son. I like that. Oi, oi, flat of British. I'm checking out some local historical sites. This is one of the best. This is a Neolithic fort on top of. Looks like you wandering about. Oi, oi. Hi, guys. Local to me is this church. And this is um, Tamara's church. It's one of the oldest in Wales, they say. One of the oldest in the world, then. So, find me, Lawrence. Interesting story here. Back in the 60s. Can't hear him. Through that door and down underground, um, discovered a catacomb full of fresco paintings. And then he was instructed to cover it all over. We don't know. So, basically, Paintings that have survived. Bless. Okay. Ta-ta, we are ta-ta. At this point in your life, Martin, what is your concept of God? God? Hmm. Well, at this stage of my life, I think... What a gaslighting psycho! Whatever is going on! No, my, my whole attitude has completely changed in the last year or two, maybe. Um, I noticed when I was in trouble before, I used to gripe and go, Oh God, why me, God? And nowadays, um, it doesn't even come into it, actually. I don't even say the God word in my psyche. Um, my entire consciousness has changed uh, to accept the fact that it is me. Me. Mm -hmm. It's me. All the while, so I am the captain of my ship, and, and that is what I am doing. Okay, I am a baby God learning to be a bigger God. Yes!